Today's video is sponsored by Nature. Get your free million year subscription today. No sign up required, no credit card required. With nature, you could do things like touch grass or smell the sky or listen to the birds or go on a walk. It's good for your health, physical, mental, and emotional. And you know, I wouldn't recommend any product or service to you without trying it myself first. And personally, my experience with nature has been very positive. Uh, you know, there's no agenda. It's a completely philanthropic venture. One more thing is it's completely natural with no artificial flavors, colorings, or intelligence. So if you're interested in trying this sponsor, go out and grab it today, or it can even be delivered right to your door. All you need to do is go outside. Okay, so that's it for the sponsor. Uh, today's video is all about simple artificial intelligence systems in 3D cooking games. <laughs> So in my last video, uh, you saw, or may have seen, that I am working on a space cafe video game. And admittedly, I haven't worked on it in the past three weeks. Uh, I went on this big motorcycle trip into the mountains where I did a big trek and saw a very holy temple and drank a lot of chai, ate a lot of paratas. Uh, if you're new to my channel or this is the first video of mine you're watching, you may not know that I live in India and sometimes these things about India come up in little snippets uh, on my channel. So I have included some footage of my little trip at the end of this video if you're interested in seeing. Anyway, so today I'm going to talk about the customer AI that I've put together in this Space Cafe video game and I've used a finite state machine to program the AI of this uh, customer class. So if you're unfamiliar with what a finite state machine is, basically it is like a series of states that a program can run based on certain conditions. Um, so the model that I'm using for this was from a Unity tutorial which is a very very succinct and I will put it in the description below. Basically how it works is that there's four main classes. So you have the state, you have an action, you have a decision, and you have a transition. So the state is the overall container for what's happening in the program. And then a state can run different actions. And the action is the actual program functionality of what's happening. So like walking or waiting or patrolling or eating or something like that. And then there's a decision, which is like a loop or a poll to check if a certain condition has been met. And if that condition is met, then it will go through a transition to a new state. Um, so that's the general functionality of those four classes. So the state basically is the container that holds the actions, the decisions and the transitions. Um, the transition holds the next state and the decision and action hold most programmatic functionality. So you can have very complex state machines. Mine is very simple and linear um, because I have a very specific intended functionality, which was basically the customer would appear in the cafe and they would walk to the bar. Once they get to the bar, then they place an order and wait until they receive the order. Once they receive the order, they walk to a seat and then they sit down and eat for the specific duration of whatever that food would be. And then once they're done eating, they exit. So for programming this state machine, I needed the baseline uh, classes for the state action, decision, and transition. I also made a controller for the customer specifically, which held all the customer data. And then I also made a customer manager that has more of a game state awareness. Uh, it knows who all the customers are and where all the destinations are to go and these kinds of things. So each customer has a reference to that as well. So I'm gonna go through this state by state. This video, I'm just gonna cover the movement state because it's a lot more complex than I thought it was and it's taking a long time to explain even just a small part of this machine. So in further videos, I will explain each different state that I have. So the way I have the um, movement is I have the first state, which is the going to bar state. Um, so the action of the state is to walk to the bar, the decision is checking to see if you've made it to the bar, and then the transition will go to the ordering state once that decision is true. So for the movement of the controller, I use a nav mesh and nav mesh agents. Um, so this is a component that's built into Unity. It's my first time using it, so I don't know a whole lot about it and I can't really explain it 
that well. Um, but basically what I did was I just turned the floor into a nav mesh. I made some of the things on the floor as obstacles, like the couch and one of the tables. Um, and then I made the prefab customer to have the nav agent component. And so that's, they just, it works together with the mesh and knows where it is and how to find the shortest distance to get places and things like that. It's a very useful tool. And I access the nav agent component of the customer through the customer controller that I created. So the way that I have the AI know where to move is that I made a very simple class called destination. Um, I created a bunch of empty game objects and put them in places that I knew I wanted the customer to move to, uh, like along the bar, for example. Um, since there's many customers, I wanted to have multiple spots at the bar so that they can choose between them. So I put three there. Um, and then in the move action, I have destination type as a variable. I can use this class for different actions in the state machine. For example, moving to the bar, I set the destination type as stand space. Um, but then in the future, when I want, again, to use the same move action to move the customer to the seat, I can set the destination to be seat space and that will know, okay, I have to choose from all the seats to move to. So since the action class is a scriptable object, I basically create multiple versions of that scriptable object for the walk action and then set the destination type for each one based on which state that it's in currently. So for the move to bar action, I set the destination type to stand and in my customer manager, I have a list of all of the destinations as well as a function to get destination by type. So the move action calls this function and then picks a random destination of the specific type um, from the list and sets the position of the customer's nav agent move to variable to be the position of the destination that it grabs. And then the magic of the nav mesh and nav mesh AI moves the customer through the shortest obstacle free path to that position. Another thing that I added to my destination class was a reference to the occupant. Um, so this is how I made sure that two customers don't fight for the same destination. So for the standing destinations, I use a trigger collider, like a big box trigger collider. And then in the on trigger stay function of the destination, which means that the customer, once the customer enters the trigger and stays in it, uh, it sets the occupant variable of the destination to be that customer. So whenever a customer is looking for a destination to move to, it checks to see if that destination is occupied and if it is then it will grab a new destination and because this walk function in the action keeps running and running and running even if it chooses a destination that then gets occupied it will still keep checking to see if it becomes occupied so it's not like it chooses it once and then doesn't realize when it becomes occupied it will keep knowing whether or not that space is available so technically, if two customers pick the same space at the same time and both start walking toward it, whoever gets there first will occupy it and then the other one will immediately find a new destination to move to. In theory, I haven't tested that specific use case at that specific time yet, but so far it's working great and no one seems to be fighting for any spot. Um, so the decision for this state is basically it just checks the nav agent if the remaining distance is less than or equal to the stopping distance, which you set as a variable in the inspector. And once it reaches, it sets the decision to true, which triggers the transition into the next state. Um, so this system ended up being a little bit more complex than uh, I thought it would be because I ended up creating this destination system that could be expanded so I could basically have the customers move wherever I want them to based on whichever state they're in. Very useful little system that I built, um, but explaining it obviously has taken a decent amount of time. So in my next video, I will explain my whole ordering mechanism, um, choosing food from the menu, ordering, how to know if the food received is the right one and these kinds of things. And then depending on the length of that video, I will make one more that's about going to sit down, which ended up being way more complicated than I thought, and also eating the food and exiting <laughs> the cafe. Sounds like very simple things. Uh, man, there's a lot of logic into participating in a cafe. Aren't we great human beings that we don't have to think about these things when we go to a cafe? Hello, little bug.
Anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, please. It would be great for me to build my channel more and subscribe if you want to see more stuff. And please remember to get outside and see some nature or open a window, take a fresh breath. I hope you can do something to make yourself feel better and peaceful and happy. Take a nap, listen to your favorite music, do something sweet. And until next time, uh, I love you very much. And here is now some footage from my little trip. And I hope it inspires you as well to get outside. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. Okay, bye.